Hi everyone, hope you're having a good lockdown so far. Very exciting, got all our kids home with us again. What could be better? Right? I'm sure we're all on the same page about that. Okay, so in the parasha, we are starting a whole new book. It's the book of Shemos of Exodus, and it's a whole new chapter for the Jewish people. All of the previous generation have died out. Yosef and all of the Shavotim are no longer alive, and it's a whole new generation of Jews. And this is the beginning of the slavery in Mitzrayim. So the slavery starts in earnest now, they're all working very hard, and we have two stories being told in parallel. We have the story of what's happening to the Jewish people in general, that they're um, doing backbreaking labor, they've got Paro, they've got the taskmasters giving them these really hard jobs to do, they're building cities. And at the same time, we have this personal account of what's happening to one particular family, we'll call them Family Levy, and the family leave, you have three children, they have Miriam, they have Aaron, and they have Moshe. So I'm going to skip ahead a bit in the parasha to when Moshe Levi flees Egypt and he comes to a place called Midian. And of course, as always happens in biblical stories, when you get to a new place, where do you go? You go to the centre of town, to the well, because that's where people hang out. Uh, it seems to be the biblical equivalent of picking up a girl in a pub. So what happens? Moshe gets to the well and he meets a girl there, as always happens. And this time he literally picks her up because the local shepherds had a bit of a run in with her and her sisters and they dunk them in the watering trough for the animals. So Moshe picks them up and you've guessed it, sounding quite familiar. He ends up marrying the girl that he met at the well, which is called Sipporah, and he starts to work for his father-in-law shepherding sheep. Sounding very familiar, right? Seems to be that this was what fathers-in-law back in the day used to do before they had property empires for their sons-in-law to run. They used to have shepherding empires for their sons-in-law to run. So one day Moshe's out tending his father-in-law's sheep and he's, you know, in the desert wandering off after a lost sheep. And suddenly he sees this miraculous sight. There's a burning bush. Now that doesn't sound so strange, it's a desert, it's very hot, why wouldn't a bush be burning? But this burning bush is consumed with fire, but the actual bush isn't itself being consumed, it's staying live and well, it's just got a fire surrounding it. So he realises there's something strange going on, and he approaches it, and he hears a heavenly voice, and it's Hashem! Hashem appears to Moshe and he says, hi Moshe, he introduces himself, he explains who he is, and he says, Moshe, I've got a job for you to do. I would like you to be the new leader of the Jewish people. You're going to go to Paro. You're going to sort out this whole messy situation that's going on there. You're going to be their spokesperson. Moshe says to him, look, Hashem, we've only just met. I'm not sure if you know my backstory, but let me fill you in on my resume. I was adopted as an infant. Then I grew up as an Egyptian prince in the household of Paro. My first act as a Jew when I went out to see how all my Jewish brethren were getting on was to murder a Mitzri, one of the Egyptians, and hide him in the sand. Consequently, I had to run away and flee here to Midian. And upon arrival in Midian, I married the daughter of the local non-Jewish priest. And apart from all this, I've got a lisp. I don't think I'm going to be a very good spokesperson. I'm not the most natural candidate for this job. And he presents these arguments to Hashem and he says, I don't think that the Jewish people are going to want me as their leader. I'm really not a very obvious choice for this job. I mean, most of their leaders, if you're to believe what Art Sproul says about them, they all knew Gomorrah, the whole of the Shas, at age six. And I've grown up as an Egyptian and, you know, with all this like dodgy backstory, I just don't think I'm the guy for the job. He says, me or nochi, who am I? And I think we can all relate now at the moment to how Moshe's feeling. We've all really just been lumbered with a job that we don't feel equipped to do. You're expected to teach three different key stages and be a maid and be a chef and be a butler and be IT support and do whatever your day job normally is on top of all of that. And we're feeling very overwhelmed and like we're not really the best people for this job. Pirkei Ovis gives us very good advice in such a situation. It says, In a place where there's no one else to do a particular job, you've just got to step up and do it. 
Hashem didn't ask somebody else to do this job. He asked Moshe. And whilst it might not be obvious to Moshe why he was picked, it was obvious to Hashem. He saw something in Moshe that meant that Hashem felt he was the right person for the job. And as it turns out, Moshe, who we call Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu, our teacher, he's the only person referred to as a Rabbeinu, our teacher. And like I said, he's not an obvious choice to teacher of all the Jewish laws and everything. He was very much not Jewish growing up. You really wouldn't expect him to be particularly good at this, but lo and behold, he was the greatest leader that we ever had. Now, look around you, look around your home. There's nobody else in your home, or at least there shouldn't be. It's only down to you. In a place where there is no one else to do your job, you've got to step up and do it. But the Mishnah says, Hish tadel lehios ish, that you have to try to be the person. It, the success isn't really up to you. All you've got to do is try. Okay, so try your best. I know it's not easy. It's a lot of things to juggle. Some of the balls are going to get dropped, but that's okay. That's life. All you can do is muddle through, do it as best as you can, and leave the success of your mission up to Hashem. Hashem has clearly chosen each of us for this particular job, for this particular household that you find yourself in. He's shut down the whole of the world and said, it's down to you in your house with your family. I'm leaving it down to you. I've got my full trust in you. You can do this. So I wish you a good week. Stay safe, stay sane, and have a good Shabbos.